And welcome back to WCCF Tech TV, guys. It's Keith again today, and we're going to talk about the upcoming AM4 platform from AMD. Most specifically today, we're going to be talking about Bristol Ridge, thanks to a slide that was included in the May Investor meeting from AMD. Now, we do know going forward that Zen should see a around a 40% IPC improvement over Carrizo. So we'll talk about that later, but first we want to talk about what we can expect from Bristol Ridge. Now we already know that Bristol Ridge is going to be APUs, it's going to be 28 nanometer based, and it's going to be the first chips to come along on the AM4 platform, which is good because, you know, it's about time for something fresh from AMD. Now the slide that's on here is pertaining to compute products, and it's specifically talking about Kaveri to Carrizo to Bristol Ridge as far as performance goes. Now it states here a 50% performance per watt generational uplift and Bristol Ridge according to this is delivering ahead of schedule which is good for the end user, the customer and you and me and everyone else. Now what does that mean in terms of performance once it goes into a system? Well, to do this, we took two systems and we matched them up on core clock and memory speed. Yes, one's on DDR4, one's on DDR3, but we're using it for comparison sake. So, you know, take that as it is. Now, one setup we're using the A10-7860K, which is a 65 watt a APU. And we're putting up against an i3 Skylake chip that and both of them are clocked at 3.5 gigahertz. I know they both clock higher, but we've clocked them down to the same clock speed and memory speeds on both are 2133. Again, one's DDR3, one's DDR4, and this specific benchmark states Cinebench R15 so, and multi-threaded compute. So we're gonna see where they kind of stand. So first off, we're gonna take a look at the 7860K at 3.5 gigahertz on multi-core with the with high priority on all of these tests that we run. High priority set gets you 294 on multi-core Cinebench score. Okay, that's, you know, may think, oh, that's not that great, it's, or it's okay. Now, the i3, which is Skylake, gets you 388. Um, that That's much higher than 294, okay. But if we take that 1.5x performance per watt, and we assume that all the other stays the equal at 65 watts at 3.5 gigahertz, we now see a multi-core performance of 441. That's a huge uptick. Um, that now puts the uh, Bristol Ridge APUs faster than the Skylake i3 clock for clock. What about single core performance? Okay, the 7860K at 3.5 gigahertz got you 82 uh, CB on single core. That's not super impressive, but the i3 gets you 146. Okay, that, that's much higher. That's what we're used to seeing from Skylake. Now, the Bristol Ridge APU nets you 123 CB. That's uh, 23 points lower, but quite a bit ahead of the a 10 k so the Kaveri chips. So that's a big uptick. So that's something really good to look forward to. We're seeing good gains, and those gains could be even better, especially on the single core performance, once you go to DDR4. Now I know the i3 could have scored higher with higher speed RAM, yada yada, but we just wanted to keep it kind of as close as we could, just for comparative sake. Now, that I, I'm personally quite excited for that, because those are good numbers that puts AMD much further ahead than where they were. And yes, I know four cores, but this is the APU, so we'll also get the benefit of the R7 graphics as well as the DDR4 RAM, which will speed up the APU as a whole. Now, what about Zen? Okay, well, we're, there's another graph on here that shows the Orichi and Summit. Now, that's Orichi, that's the uh, Vishera and Pile Driver, and then Summit Ridge being the Zen FX cores. Now, if you look at the chart, it doesn't state what the lines represent, but we do know that we're looking at around a 40% performance improvement um, over Carrizo, which can roughly equal out to the same performance uh, increase as what you're seeing before going from Kaveri to Bristol Ridge. So the best we can see is an FX 8 core 16 thread part would perform pretty close to an i7-5960X, which is impressive. This is something we haven't seen from a, in a long time from AMD to really be able to put up numbers that are close to what Intel can do, even on that enthusiast end, 
if that is aimed toward the mainstream market. Now, of course, pricing will dictate a lot of how we see these performance numbers, but let me know in the comments below what you think about this, and feel free to subscribe and like the video if you found it interesting, and we will catch you all in the next one.